While we're here in Curacao, it's the first time that we have been sort of stationary long enough to start thinking about the uh, electric motor upgrades we need to make before crossing to Europe next spring. So I am going to get started on that. The first thing I've got to do is um, remove the transmission and remount the motor direct drive because that's going to give us a lot of efficiency, hopefully. And then hopefully we will also get a new motor controller. Um, which is going to make the wiring a lot more simple and hopefully it's going to give us regen as well. But first thing I need to do is crawl down in here and start pulling all that stuff out. My favorite thing to do. heavy well it has been two years since we installed this motor and it's um it looks like it's holding up really well there's hardly any rust the paint's held up pretty well the sprocket on the end doesn't look like it has any kind of additional wear it actually looks like pretty uniform wear I feel a little bit better about reinstalling it now <laughs> All that just to get that thing off. Destruction. No, since um, since we're going direct drive, and since we kind of know that electric motor is the thing we want to do. Uh, now we can put a little more commitment into it and remove the old engine pan um, so that this whole space will be nice and cleaned out. We'll have a custom engine pan or uh, mounts made for our electric motor there. And then this whole place will be like empty and clean and clear so we can build some storage and start using it again. Luckily, back in the day when this boat was made, they made the hull long before they put this engine pan in. So the little thin layer of um, polyester resin they used to hold the pan on didn't have any kind of chemical bond to the hull. So a little bit of uh, leverage. There's only like maybe one layer of glass and just pops right out. That's where all my spare nuts and bolts went. <laughs> Yo, good man. Yo, good man. That came out a whole lot easier than I was expecting it to. I was really thinking I was gonna have to like sit in there with a Dremel and like cut like all this stuff out, but it just ripped right out. You should see how empty this area of the boat is now. And it looks like if we can find the right parts here on the island, getting the sprocket made for the end of our prop shaft should be really easy too. Because it's uh, it's not a tapered shaft, it's, uh, it's just a normal smooth shaft, so. So next I gotta clean all that out and then um, make some fiberglass and some supports to put the uh, electric motor back on but that might be tomorrow because I'm tired. <laughs> I got water. And I've got laundry in a cooler. Yeah. Why 
Why might I have a cooler, you might ask. Uh, this styrofoam, they use to pack vegetables in the local grocery store when they ship them over from like Venezuela. And I'm gonna use it to make the new engine mount for the electric motor. I only need a little bit, but this was like $5 or something to buy it, so now we have it. Since the strength of the new motor mount comes from the fiberglass itself, I like using foam for the formwork since it's easy to work with and very forgiving. It merely provides the basic shape for the final layout. Today, we finally get to start glassing the new like motor pan to put the electric motor back into. It's been a couple of, what, a week maybe? Two weeks since we started this project, but uh, all the prep work to fiberglass makes the end product a lot better. Um, and it's also really nice to have all this workspace. It's one of the reasons we love the Nook so much. It's because there's so much space to work on projects like this. With these larger, more complicated um, shapes to make out of fiberglass, it's a lot easier to sort of pre-cut all the pieces and dry lay them in to make sure you have enough layers and they're the right shape and everything's going to go smoothly, um, and then install them all with epoxy at the end. And it's pretty straightforward. It's the prep work that makes a job go a lot smoother than anything else. Get, making sure the forms are exactly right and the mold work is exactly right and you've got all the pieces cut to the right size. Um, the actual laying the fiberglass is actually pretty easy once everything else is sorted out. All right. Let's do this. I'm ready. <laughs> In you like go. The most yoga, yoga, yoga I've ever done. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Kika and I have done many fiberglass projects in the past few years, and the whole process has become a well choreographed dance. So we have to mix it in such small cups because even though we have uh, the West Systems like ultra slow hardener or something, this cup will still kick in about 10 minutes if we don't use all of it. So. We're doing little batches at a time. Last piece. That's We're it. almost done. That's it. How does it feel to be almost done? My back's killing me, girl. I bet. This is way more uncomfortable than when we did the floors. <laughs> At least I could stand up from time to time. The way I see it is if I have any control over the installation or the fabrication, then I'm going to overbuild it so that there's no way it's going to break because there's so many parts on a boat that you're not really in control of, like the electronics and the motor controller and stuff. But the wiring and the fiberglassing and all that, I have control over, so I'm going to make sure it's super strong. done looks good I'm a mess that's been a long time in the making going direct drive we're almost done now once that dries we'll be able to like remount the motor connect it up and uh, and give it a little test Alright guys, it's, it's Halloween! Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> so I'm Orange Man. We got goth hip hop ballerina and a frosty pirate. Yeah. Our, yeah. And we're gonna go hang out in downtown Punta tonight where there's a Halloween party. <laughs> and we're gonna drink mojitos. And hopefully we're not the only ones in costumes. Hopefully we're not the only ones in costumes. <laughs>
that was a good time. And we got a bunch of cups. We, we got have, we have seven six, awesome cups. Six cups. And sandwiches! And sandwiches. <laughs> For what? days! What? Zero <laughs> entrance fee, free drinks, and free sandwiches. That's, yeah. that's a good party. That's that was that a is. good party. Only in Kudoshaw. Thank you, Eugene, for hosting an awesome party for yes. us. Yeah, it was a good time. Thank you, Eugene. <laughs>We gave the new mounts a few days to fully cure before reinstalling the motor, but without the transmission, aligning the motor to the prop shaft was even more critical. When we first installed the motor, we knew one day we may very well go with direct drive. Because of this, we had a machine shop fit and install bearings that could handle the thrust from the prop pushing and pulling against the motor. Uh, before, the electric motor was sort of behind the transmission, so the transmission was what was taking all of the force, forward and backwards, and the motor was bolted down so that it just wouldn't spin, right? But now that we're going direct drive, the motor's actually taking all of that forward and reverse thrust, so uh, I'm beefing up the sort of forward bracket by reusing the uh, adapter plate from our old transmission since I already met, welded this lovely bracket onto it. And it looks like it's gonna fit pretty much perfectly. I'll add some bolts to the bottom, cut this part off, and then the motor will be a lot more solid from like forward and backwards movement. <laughs> Devil horns for Halloween. That was easy. We've never ran the grinder off our inverter before. Uh, I just kind of assumed that it was too much power, but it um, it runs just enough to cut and grind. But anytime it like gets bogged down, it trips it. So it's like right on the edge. Friends. With the extra space gained from moving the motor aft, we decided to move the batteries forward to free up more space in the cockpit locker and make them easier to access and maintain. We have been trying to register our boat in Canada since we bought it because I'm Canadian and Kika's Haitian, so there's no real reason for us to be on a US flag boat. It kind of makes checking in and out a little bit complicated. Um, and we finally figured out a way to do it and we thought it was gonna take like two months. We just did it here in, in um, Curacao and we f submitted the paperwork like a week ago and we finally heard back from them. It was really, really fast and we're really excited. So we're firing up the grill, we're gonna have barbecue burritos, we're gonna fly a flag, we're gonna drink some beers, drink some wine, and <laughs> some Arrogant Worms, the best Canadian songs there are. I should get mine out. It's like a three by five foot two. I think it's. Cool. Hello, my sweetie. Holy cow! <laughs> Fishbowl. Yeah. Holy cow! Like, <laughs> I, I want a beer of the same size. <laughs> Thanks again for watching this step. We hope it answered a few of your questions about our electric motor upgrades. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And come back next week when my mom comes for a visit, we take her sailing, and Kika rides an ostrich. But until then, cheers! Yoga Dan, Yoga Dan, does whatever a Yoga Dan can. <laughs>